Welcome to episode three of Pay to Play. So if you hadn't noticed in this series, we are doing it exactly the same as you guys do. So we are turning up to venues, we are finding swims and we are fishing. Now for this episode, we're heading to Thorny Weir, but a quick phone call this morning with the bailiff said that it's super busy due to the competition on Farlows. So next up, we've headed to Horseshoe, which is an incredible venue owned by the Carp Society. Now to fish here, you have to be a member of the Carp Society and then they charge you £1.25 per hour of fishing, which I think is a great way of doing it because that way you're only paying for the time that you actually spend at the venue. So what we've done, we've had a little wander around. John's in peg 22 and the guy next door in Kavanagh's has said that he's going to be going at 12 o'clock, so I'm going to drop in behind him. Now what we're going to do in this episode, which is a little bit different to the last one, is we're going to keep our tactics separate. So John's going to go in with an approach using some naturals and I'm going to go in with a pellet and boilie approach just to see whether it competes against each other, are the naturals more effective than what the boilie and pellet is, and we're going to try and keep it a little bit like that so we're not doing the same thing in every single episode. But for now, John's getting his rods out and I'm waiting for the guy to get out so I'm going to get some bait prep. So we thought we'd do things a little bit different in episode three where we would talk about the bait before we start and the reason behind this is that when we've turned up to horseshoe my peg is taken and it's not going to be available until about lunchtime so i thought i wouldn't waste any time i'd get to the back of my van get some bait out and i'm going to explain to you now why i've chosen to use these baits the past couple of episodes, we've started off with caught well with maggots, we've caught well with worm and little bits and bobs. However, I thought that I wanted to use something different. I want to show you guys some other ways that I use bait without having to use naturals. So what we're going to do in this episode, I know John's going to be fishing a little bit of naturals, not a huge amount. And John's got a lot of experience on this lake. He's fished it quite a bit. So I'm sort of taking a little bit of his advice. Now, my thoughts behind the venue, I've only ever fished here twice, once when I was 12 uh, and once with Tracker maybe about four years ago. So I'm actually really looking forward to fishing at Horseshoe properly. Now, the Horseshoe Lakes, what I know about it, 62 acres, got a lot of fish in here, but they do regularly stock it. So to start off with, I'm gonna be using some pellets. Now I've got some Alaracas here in eight mil. There's no fish in this lake that is gonna resist these bad boys. Then added to that, I'm gonna go in with some boilie. Now I'm a big fan of small boilies. In the next bucket, we have some of eight mil bug. I've got a couple of 15 mils in there just for something a little bit bigger. And then I've got some chops. And then finally, where would we be without the golden grains? A little bit of sweet corn that's going to give a little bit of colour. Now the lake's super clear, so that little bit of colour is hopefully going to attract the carp's eye. See the bait there, they're going to come down and start having a little bit of a feed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix these up. Once I've mixed them up, I'm going to add some of this, some amino smoke. And what this does is it gives off a nice little bit of a cloud, a lot of attraction around the bait. You know, this lake is enormous, but it is very, very busy. So there's a lot of bait out there. So I want to give mine a little bit of an edge. So to start off with on my session, I'm going to be using boilie, pellets and sweet corn. Well, that is the last bomb on this warm, almost spring feeling afternoon. As Bonesy said, I managed to get into a swim uh, next door. It's one that I fished the other week, had a couple of fish from you, but in 62 acres, that certainly does not mean a thing whatsoever. Um, but I'm on the same spot. I wrapped up to where I was, put the marker lead back out, and essentially the whole of this Winter Bay area is covered in sort of a couple of mil of um, sort of weed, milfoil, whatever you want to call it. But on the ledge, you get an absolute crack down. So I wrapped it back up with the same wraps as last week, um, last week, two or three weeks ago, 27 wraps, cast out the same feature, got the app, exactly the same drop. So I didn't waste any time really, cut the rods out on the spot, and then a bit mix of my bait. And I said, Bones has already gone through his, and we'll go through mine uh, if it works. But essentially, I have been using naturals now for the last couple of years and found on this venue, you don't have to use load, but a little bit can go your way. So a little blend of those eight millers that I use everywhere, pellet, corn, and a little bit of blitzed up worm as what's gone out. 
Started off with 15 to 20 spoms. I lost count after 15, but definitely didn't go over 20. Um, and yeah, that's basically what we've put out there. So three rods, all on wafters, bit of bait over the top and sit back and hopefully watch. Have seen some fish show a lot longer than me in the prime swims, big double, sort of out onto the point area, but there have been fish coming from this area. So we will stay very optimistic. Bait's out, rods are out, time for a brew. There we go. Let's have a little talk about spots. So what I've done is I've had a good cast around and I've just found this spot here and it's 21 wraps. And it's just a little bit clearer. Now looking in the margins, and it's a good thing to do when you turn up to the lake, especially when it's as clear as this, to have a look in the margins, that's gonna give you some idea of what's out there. You know, it's not gonna be a hugely different area. If you find something that's dead smooth gravel, you'll know when you bring the lead back, it'll just come back so easily, there'll be no catching there won't be like mm, 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 unless you get heavy gravel and then you'll have the duh, 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 duh. so what i'm getting is i'm actually getting a little bit of a dun 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 and what that is is where it's grabbing hold of the little bits of weed and it's just slowing it down a bit as it pulls through but what i found on this area is it's just less than the rest so i'm quite happy with that area what i'm going to do is i'm going to change my lead setup and the reason I'm changing my lead setup from my favoured lead clip is because of that choddiness. Now looking in the bottom, there's some bits of Canadian down there, some bits of silkweed. So I know at least with the helicopter, if it does land on a little bit of that, it is going to be presented on top. And then I'm going to get plenty of bait out. You know, it's springtime now. We're towards, well, the date is mid of April. So we're about 14th of April, 15th of April, I think it is. So, you know, the fish are starting to come out. You're seeing lots of fish get caught. Fish are going to be feeding. So I'm going to put a decent help and a bait in to get going. And hopefully we'll be able to string together a run of fish. I'm not going to go crazy, because if we go crazy, then you can't take it out. So I'm going to start off with about 10, 12 spawns. And then if I haven't had a bite, I'll just put a couple more in later on. Just a bit of attraction, a bit of noise. See if we can drag them in. But for now, I'm happy with that spot. 21 wraps towards the tree. We'll give you a quick update on how the day's gone so the the gentleman left the swim that i was going to be in and obviously i've, I've found my spot and got i put a good bed of bait out i've put about 15 spoms out maybe even 20. um i wanted to get a good carpet of bait down there those pellets are going to break down give me plenty of attraction there's some eight mil boilie in there and some chops and obviously the sweet corn for a bit of like visual attraction um john's got his area baited he's going to tell you about what bait he's using and how he's gone about it um and now it's time to chill out and get some food on. We've got burgers tonight, which will be very pleasant. Got some nice big fat burgers, one of my favourite meals on the bank. And yeah, we're into the night. We have got some proper cold temperatures coming again. We've had lovely weather um, and it's been quite sunny today. But as you can see, I've got my beanie on. I've actually got my CR3 suit behind the bed because tonight we're dropping down to one degree. Can you believe it? Middle of April and we're going to get one degree. Um, but we're not disheartened or anything. We've seen fish showing. The fish are showing a little bit longer than where we're fishing, probably about 130, 140 yards. We can't go that far because obviously there's people on the right hand side of us and on the left hand side. Um, so we're just going to stick to our guns, stick to our baited area and hopefully in the night, although it'll be cold, we'll have a fish to show you. But for now, it's time to get some dinner on and have a bit of a munch. Well, Literally, just sat down after tea. Carl's come round to have a quick chat. And Carl's my good luck charm when Rod seems to go. And he's like, I think a fish just showed on your spot. I went, nah, just be a bird, mate. And literally the rod's just pulled up tight. And this is absolutely rucking. It's gone from left to right. And when it pulls, it flipping pulls. But there's a lot of people around, so I'm conscious of making sure you don't get anyone caught up. 
but this is rocking. Oh. All right, a lot of people say about, why do you dip your tip? Basically, it gives you a guide of where the line is. So that's why he tells you where the fish is. So it allows me to now know that was going left. So put a bit of right pressure, swing it back round, dip the tip. Yeah, around it's coming. I didn't, someone told me this. Oh, the phone's kicking off. It's all going off in the swim. <laughs> And there she is, the one that should be a 40. And just purely because the way it fought is insane. But 21 and a 10, 21 and 10, or whatever it was. But no matter what the size, these horseshoe fish are outrageous. Right hand rod, so luckily it's still got a bit of light and it's not the middle. Me and Carl, when we were sat there, literally before it went off, and I bet it's the middle one that goes because it's always a pain in the bum to get back in. It's a right hand rod right on the center of that tree and then a load more bait. But yeah, off the mark, pay to play on horseshoe, buzzing. Oh God, oh, she's gone, she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Swam back healthy, I see. Well, would you believe it? A recast, 10 more spawns, and 10 minutes later, and 31 pound 10 ounce of horseshoe mega mirror. Few beeps, picked up and it kited massively left over the top of the other two lines. So I had to drag it back round and literally it came in a straight line, bones like, that's gonna be a big fish. I went, I don't know, I don't know, and did nothing. And then rucked underneath the tip, thought it was another 20, but 31 pound 10 ounce. Oh, buzzing. In the rain. In the rain, it wasn't due to come either. But yeah, a little pink one over the top of a load of bits at bait, which we'll go through probably tomorrow. But for now, got to try and get this rod back out in the dark. Buzzing, yes. Well, it's the first bite for me, and it wasn't the baited area. To my right hand side, I chucked that solid, and I chucked it towards a tree where I seen a fish show when I first arrived, over towards that area. It's a little bit of like no man's land where there's two swims to my right and nobody's in them. And it's sort of an area that you can imagine doesn't see bait, doesn't see rigs unless somebody in here is fishing over there because you can't fish it from either peg either side of it. And I just figured that might be an area where fish like to hold a little bit and feel a bit safe. We are quite close in now, I think. Go on, pull her in. There she goes. Oh, there she is. She's in. <laughs> My first horseshoe carp. How about that? Nice little scaly one. So look at that. My first horseshoe carp, and it's an absolute worldy. Just look at it. It's so pretty. Big scales on it and put up a proper fight. So happy I chucked that solid bag over there because it's got my first bite. This is my first ever fish out of horseshoe. You know, it's one of those places I've never got down to and I really wish I had done more. Such a big lake, definitely my style of fishing and hopefully there's plenty more of these to come. Taking on a little yellow PB wafter in a little solid bag of pellet. Happy days. That's two for John and one for me and the session starting well. <laughs> Well, 
good, very early morning. It's about half past five, quarter to six. And as you can see, the breath is condensing. It was a chilly one last night. Did have one in the night, a low sort of, well, mid double, low 20 maybe, but it unhooked itself by the time I got to it in the net. And I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna tip it back. But this prehistoric looking, really cool mirror is a very early morning wake up call. So I did grab Bonesy from his pit. But yeah, what a mega fish, proper, just berserk patterns, loads of little dots and freckles. These horseshoe fish, as I've already said, are outrageous. But yeah, that's now two on the right rod, two on the left rod, and nothing in the middle of the spot, crazy. But uh, right, I'm gonna slip this one back and uh, get this rod out in the light, perfect. Right then, it's that standard part of any film where we talk about bait as we always do on pay to play. And there is a reoccurring theme. Obviously last time on Bray's Nose, it was all about bit baits and small bits and pieces. And to be honest with you, that's a lot of my fishing, but that will change as we go through these series, there's no doubt. But the mix as ever is bitty bits and pieces. Little eight millers, both those bright yellow banana nuts ones, but this time as well also paired up with some of the standard nuts some pellets that I do let absorb a little bit of juice from the corn, because corn's in there as well. We've got some of this stuff as well, which is like vampire juice, old stinky garlic hemp. I said, some sweet corn. But the thing that sets this apart, again, as I seem to keep using, is these things. Big old fat, juicy worms. Give them a good old blitz up, whack them in. Now, there is a common misconception with worms with the more the better, and I don't believe that. I think a measured amount of worms and I've got a fixed amount of worms I put in every single mix when I put in the bait back out is key. 90% of my mix is made up of those small particle baits. That worm is just that extra 10%. Do I think that if I took it out, I wouldn't catch? Who knows? But is it worth not putting it in for the extra few quid? Absolutely not at all. Um, but yeah, as I said, bit carpet feed. And when I say carpet feed, because I am putting a lot out, I've already gone through probably eight or 10 kilos of bait since I've been here. Now that might not seem a lot to a lot of people, but I can guarantee you when accurately spotted on a clear area, that will be a lot, a lot of bait. So I keep handling this and it stinks like garlic, but um, the rigs over the top, the same rigs that I use 90% of the time, those slip D combi rigs with a little smelly fishy pink uh, wafter over the top. And that's it. I've not tried to reinvent myself. As I said, a couple of weeks ago, I fished in here, had success. And all I've essentially done is press repeat, done the same thing. Has it worked? Absolutely. Will it work if I change something? Who knows, but why change what is already working? So regards baits and rigs, be simple, but say especially in venues like this that have got a lot of fish, don't be afraid to give them a bit of bait. quiet old afternoon John hasn't it? It's been a tale of two hours <laughs> hasn't it really? <laughs> really positive start last night, four fish for you, one for me, I thought here we go, it's gonna, <laughs> we're gonna have a few and it just doesn't seem to have happened today, we've had some really up and down weather, we had a bit of rain this morning, then the sun come out and we were in shorts and t-shirt, now the wind's changed and it's cold and it looks like it's gonna rain so a bit of a mix, you fish wash you a lot, is it making a difference to one here? Well the thing is, it, the thing is, is it's still only been 24 hours, well it's not even yeah. 24 hours since we started yeah, having the bites, so, yeah. but the wind does change, they get massively on a mm. new wind for 24 hours and then come to the back of it and that's what happened when we arrived yesterday, it was yeah. the 24 hours of the back of the wind yeah, the and that's why I think we had yeah. it, so but potentially. Still, still positive, I mean I'll put a little bit more bait out, I'm still on the same area after seeing them fish earlier, you put a bit more I put a little more bait out. Yeah. Well, I've got a little bit more I'm going to top it up within a bit, just before it gets dark, if I hadn't had a bite, because the bite scent did come at night, which says to me that the fish are feeding at night. Um, the fish haven't shown as much today. We've seen a few shows, yeah. but not like they were this time yesterday. So have the fish moved off? Hopefully the night time's going to let us know. But at the minute, it's been all right, hasn't it? I, mean, it's... Yeah, I, I will happily end the session on four fish from yesterday yeah. into this yeah, morning. Definitely. However, 
we have still got the whole bite time that we had yesterday yeah. left. So just we'll just see. I haven't had one off my baited area, I've only had one off a solid bag. So I'm gonna keep the bait going in just a little bit, little bit. It is only small baits, so there is a lot of little fish in here. So, you know, only the time will tell, John. I'd like to get one off the baited area, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, it's from now, literally, baits out, rods mm. out, yeah. and I think it's turned Bonesy cooks some food again. Oh God, I'm always cooking. <laughs> coming to the end of another pay to play and it's been a it started off very successful it seems to have gone a bit quiet for the end didn't it a tale of two halves as we said yesterday <laughs> it's it the first it? 24 hours felt like we couldn't put a foot wrong no and then now wind change fortune change that's right it just shows just how important understanding the wind and what happens on especially big venues like this now the wind on here they tend to follow it for the first follow it 24. for 24 back off it afterwards that's right yeah and we had a wind switch which means they've followed that wind and they've gone much further over into the lake more over to the left we've seen them showing we did see a couple of fish show near one's our just literally just showed just long again right yeah long. yeah so we did see a couple of fish show near our spots and yesterday i was really after the thought of changing my spots then seeing a couple of shows near my area I stayed on the spot and I was real hopeful of a bite last night, but nothing. And your spot didn't produce anything. No, I say the fish hadn't really ever really showed on the spot. They've been yeah. in and around it, but obviously I had that four fish the first night, first day. Yeah. But yeah, so it's just seen two literally just doubled out on the yeah. spot just as we were about to pack down and which leave. Is, which is always sod's law, but we've got to get moving and get packed up. But we, we really hope you've enjoyed this third series of Pay to Play. Don't forget, we're trying to give you as much information in the programs as we can so if there's anything you want to know make sure you drop it in the comments on the youtube channel and not only that add some venues that you want us to go to i know there's a couple of venues that have come up so we're going to take a look at them for episode four mm -hmm.